Here's an idea. Bullet hell shooters are meditative. Imagine for a second that instead of trying to find a needle in a haystack, you are a needle in a haystack, and in order to be found, you must travel from one end of said stack to the other without once touching any hay. No hay touching. No touching! Such is the difficulty of bullet hell games. Usually top-down, but occasionally side-scrolling, bullet hell games test a player's pattern memorization, twitch muscle reflexes, and epileptic seizure resistance. Generally, you control a flying ship or warrior dodging an impossible onslaught. Hundreds, if not thousands, of electricity orbs, energy spheres, lasers, bullets, and a crazy colorful assortment of fast-moving whatnot that TV Tropes collectively refers to as DACA, for the sound that a machine gun makes. You know, like DACA 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 Now, there are a lot of games that fit the bullet hell bill. The Toho Project games, Ikaruga, Gundemonium. We'll put a list with links to some of our favorites and some favorites that people share with us via Twitter in the doobly-doo. And yeah, they might look a little stressful, but remember, Remember, media is a mirror, and if an angry, stressed out button masher looks in, I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's more than one way and attitude with which to dodge a thousand magical ice crystals fired at the speed of light. You can king of Kong your way to the top and memorize all of the patterns, all the gaps, know exactly where your hitbox and strike opportunities are, or you can let all of that go and just become the ship, melt the game and the rest of the world away into a veneer of existence. Do not react, just do. Act without acting. Play the game without actually playing it. I mean, the look alone of bullet hell games is so intense, so crowded and nuts, that actually paying attention is tough from the get-go. Like, when you're walking the streets of Sepalo, do you pay attention to every moving object? Of course not, you'd lose it, there's so much going on. So maybe you focus on one thing here, one thing there, you focus on yourself, or you go on a kind of autopilot. This autopilot in the face of complexity, thinking but not, doing but not, has its place throughout lots of video game history. Contra, Donkey Kong, Castlevania, all kinds of racing games, Guitar Hero, and depending upon how much self-respect you have, maybe even Dark Souls. And games like Cannibals and Super Hexagon can be played in this zone beyond the zone. It's not being in the zone because it's not temporarily enhanced awareness or momentarily improved decision making, but deciding without the deciding, the removal of self from the action. It's actually almost like meditation. In Taoism, there's something called Wu Wei, meaning non-action, Wu Wei describes a complete and natural harmony of being, absent of intention, but no less devoid of purpose. Rivers flow without flowing, trees grow, but do not themselves intend to grow. Rain falls, but does not itself fall and your heart beats without beating. Wu Wei is all of the doing but effortless, without all of the messy intention. Now, yeah, there is a disconnect here with shoot 'em ups which are not exactly a natural or spiritual pursuit, at least not for most people. But this way of talking about taking action and being present within a moment is applicable and applied to so many other non-spiritual endeavors. It's turning off your intention and allowing something else to guide you, or being unconcerned with guidance altogether. There's flow and momentum in dance and even some kinds of visual art. There's being in the moment when improvising music. For instance, percussionist James Muir, in talking to Derek Bailey for his book Improvisation said, the way to discover the undiscovered in performance terms is to immediately reject all situations as you identify them. The idea being that whatever it is, making music, dancing, shooting at spaceships, and maybe even living, they're all at times absurdly complex endeavors that take place within a system that is either fantastically contrived or naturally wonderfully impenetrable. And given that, maybe the best way, or at the very least a way, to get any kind of purchase on sense or success whatever that is, is to reach for some possibly uninhabitable liminal space. Sometimes with the aid of scatter guns and smart bombs. There's a tendency to think of meditation as a kind of shutting down or turning off, but there are lots of ways to meditate. Sure, you might sit quietly, but you might also perform a set of flowing, repetitive movements. Maybe you focus on your breath or your heart or the sounds of your environment. But meditation isn't solely and doesn't have to be a quiet and serene activity. The goal of meditation isn't singular and doesn't have to be accomplished through one set of actions. Chanting and even shouting can be meditative activities. The whirling dervishes of Sufi Islam Islam are a powerful example of active meditation. And while it certainly might not have the same spiritual import, I wonder if a meditative state reached while listening to noise music or scrolling through your Tumblr dashboard or dodging a heck ton of DACA isn't meditation nonetheless. What do you guys think? Can bullet hell games or similarly modern pursuits be meditative? Let us know in the comments and click on the power up to subscribe and also to get the special double laser beam cannon twice.
You know, I have referred to myself as being from the internet on occasion, but I think that's different from digital nativity. Let's see what you guys have to say about digital natives. Yo 252 Yo attributes the existence of uh, digital nativeness to youngsters being more daring as a whole and wonders how that is gonna change when technology continues to be made uh, for wide adoption. And you know, this is, I agree with this. Um, actually, I just bought my dad an iPad and he's someone who's normally not great with technology, but he got it right off the bat. Like, it was so easy. So. Yeah, some, some things are probably gonna change. Ryan Getz says that there is a digital native, digital immigrant divide, but it doesn't demarcate some kind of technological understanding, rather the understanding of social norms that happen online. I wonder to what degree digital native um, and digital immigrant has to do with um, like, social uh, social experience and community and not just familiarity with technology. This is a really interesting distinction to make, and I think I totally agree, but of course it's a much smaller, right, a much smaller nugget within the larger digital native idea. To Jackball25, I hope never, because if I'm getting things wrong that means I'm learning stuff, and that's kind of the secret plot of the show is that I just get to learn about things. Um, relatedly to Jack McKay and everybody else who let me know that the doctor is British and not English, I actually do know the difference. That It was my misunderstanding. I thought that actually that it was canonical that the doctor is English, mostly based on the fact that David Tennant doesn't use his real accent, so it's really interesting to hear that Peter Capaldi might be using his, and that is he's going to be maybe a Welsh or maybe a Scottish doctor, I don't know. But then, yeah, so, sorry, sorry. Fricasio writes a really interesting comment about the problematic nature of generational divides in the first place and saying that most of these things are very middle and upper class centric Western ideas of what groups of people have available to them. Um, and then uh, Joshua Travis goes on to uh, sort of make a supporting point and saying that digital natives do exist in some sense, but it is largely socioeconomic and resource based and not uh, nearly as generational as most of the literature makes it out to be. These are really great comments. So I'm I'm just gonna pause here for a second for some extra time so you can read them. Robert Jones wonders whether or not digital nativity is best defined as someone's willingness to dissolve the dividing line between their online self and their meat space self. I wonder, in my experience, um, someone who might be called a digital native is still likely to sort of hold on to the like digital dualist idea of the internet being a different place, being a different self, but um, whether or not that's actually how they behave is I think another question entirely. So this is a great, yeah, this is a, a great question and a great idea. John Bollinger says that he is a sandwich native. Um, while we're listing things that we are natives of, I think I would like to be a t-shirt native. I have an innate preternatural understanding of how t-shirts work and what they're for. Um, yeah, t-shirt native. Either that or maybe a microwave native. I'm really good at microwaving things. Jared Spencer says that the digital native, digital immigrant divide doesn't describe a familiarity with technology, but an understanding of what certain pieces of technology are for. And the example he uses is Snapchat, a thing that he might not have use for, but which teenagers understand immediately what it might be great for. I wonder, maybe combined with what Robert Jones was saying, this is, we're heading in a road down a path that I, that I think I maybe kind of like. This is an interesting idea. Kyle the Awesome, um, I cannot do a handstand actually, but I can do this. I know, it's, it's very impressive. This week's episode was brought to you by the hard work of these punctilious individuals. We have an IRC and a subreddit, links in the description. And in light of a tweet of the week, you should spend your time checking out Project for Awesome, which has been going on since yesterday and is smashing all of the records as far as I can tell. Go check out Project for Awesome. DFTBA. And finally, fair warning, since it is that time of year, there will be no episode next week, and then the week after that there will be a short New Year's episode, and then finally back to full episodes the week after that. But I'll still be online to talk to you guys, I'll be in the IRC and hanging out on the subreddit, so say hey, and uh, if I don't hear from you, have a happy holidays, and uh, tell your family that I think that they are smart and charming, just like you. You guys are, no, you guys are the best.